Let's compute a left Riemann sum. I'm going to show you how to do this using the formula, but then I'm also going to show you a way to do this with your TI-84 calculator. We're going to approximate the area under x squared using four left-hand rectangles. So these four rectangles are left rectangles because the height is measured from the left-hand edge of each of those rectangles. Each of our heights is measured on the left-hand edge, and each of those heights then is a function value. So f of x is going to be our function value. So each of our heights is going to be a function value at the correct end point, this time being the left one. And each of those widths is going to be, we just call it delta x. It's going to be that interval width divided up into the number of rectangles. In this case, it happens to be two, and I'm going to show you how we compute that in just a second. But what we're really doing here is taking the area of each of these rectangles, and it's just going to be a height times a width. But I want to add up all four of these. So we can say that that left Riemann sum is equal to the sum as i goes from 1 to 4, rectangle 1, rectangle 2, 3, and 4, of the height times the width. And I can replace that height with an f of x sub i and a width with delta x. So it looks like this. And as we unwind all of this language, l just stands for that left Riemann sum. n is the total number of rectangles. I is our index, it's counting rectangles for us. X sub I is the endpoint that we're using for that particular rectangle that we're on, and delta X is the width. Unpacking this for our example, I can replace n with the number of rectangles, and we've got four rectangles. I can also compute what that width delta x is. Delta x is this width here for each of our rectangles, but in general, we would say that delta x is equal to the interval width, which would be, this is a to b in general, so that would be b minus a divided by the number of rectangles. But for our example, we're going from 2 to 10. So 10 to 2, which is 8, divided by 4, and we get a width of 2. Next, we want to figure out what that x sub i star is equal to. In our example, we want to use 2 to compute that first height, 4 to compute the height for the second, 6 to compute the height for the third, and 8 to compute the height for the fourth. So when we're computing our x sub i star, that sample point, we do want to start where our interval starts, which is a. In this case, a is equal to 2. But we want to start at 2. I don't want to add any delta x's. I don't want to add my width. So when I say I'm going to add a delta x, I want to start by adding 0 delta x's. So when i is equal to 1, I need this to be i minus 1. This will start me off with 0 delta x's. So for our example, a is equal to 2 plus i minus 1, delta x is also equal to 2. I can do the math here and simplify. I get 2 plus, distributing that 2, 2i two minus 2, and that gives me x sub i star represented by just, oh my gosh, that's so nice, just by a 2i. Let's get all of this into our formula. So L sub 4 is equal to, so it's going to be that sum as I runs from 1 to 4. Remember, I is counting off those rectangles. F of x sub i. Well, I know that. Let me actually put it up here for a sec. F of x sub i star is going to be that value squared. So that's going to be our 2i squared. So as I put that into my summation, I want to put this in as a 4i squared. So that replaces our f of x sub i star, that left-hand sample point. And next I want to put in our delta x. So delta x, we know that delta x is equal to a 2. Simplifying this, we've got our sum as i goes from 1 to 4 
8i squared. Now I'm ready to use one of my summation formulas and I only need the one for i squared. So let's go ahead and pull that 8 out in front. So we've got 8, the sum as i goes from 1 to 4 of i squared. I can replace our summation with the formula. So carrying that 8 over, What's in the green box gets replaced with that formula, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. But I know that n is equal to 4. So I can go through and replace each of these n's with a 4. So here comes that 4. So I get a 4 here, 4 plus 1, 2 times 4 plus 1. Let's simplify what we can. So I can cancel the six and the eight with twos. I get a four here and a three here. Um, simplifying, I've got four times four, which is 16 times five. And then this two times four plus one is a nine, all divided by three. I can cancel those threes and I've got 16 times 15, which happens to be 240. Now I promised that I would show you also how to do this on your calculator. Now to put this into your calculator, you still need to set up that Riemann sum. So let me go ahead and find that simplified Riemann sum. I want this form right here, but so I'm not confusing that index i with the imaginary unit i, I'm gonna go through and replace the i with a k. So let me get rid of this as well, and let's replace that with a k. So we're gonna end up with an 8k squared instead, and that summation is gonna go k k as our index equals one, two, four. So in my calculator, I wanna to go to the math menu. So I go to math and then I arrow down until I find the summation function, which is right here, it's zero on my calculator and then hit enter. It wants your index first, that's your counter k. To get to that one, I'm gonna hit my alpha key followed by the parenthesis and that's where the k lives. So I've got k goes from one arrow over to four, and then inside those parentheses, we want our eight i squared or eight k squared. So eight alpha k, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit my squared key, eight k squared, and then we can hit enter, and we've got that same answer of 240. You are doing fantastic. Take a look at this video next.